My name is Hesh House and I've been a PhD student at Queen Mary for four years, uh, supervised by Professor Julia Buffy and Dr Alfred, Alfred Hyatt. Um, I will be starting my new job at Queen Mary in September as a lecturer um, and I'm interested in water. <laughs> So the, this is the 20th biennial Chaucer Congress, so it's a big deal in the medieval world. Um, I think we have over 500 people at the conference, all medievalists, but both uh, teachers and academics, so quite a nice mix of people. It's been running for a very long time, and it prints a journal every year, so there are sessions about the journal, there are sessions about current research, there are sessions about pedagogy and teaching. Um, who comes? Everybody comes. This is kind of where you want to be to meet the sort of medieval royalty, if you will. Uh, people come from the States, they come from Australia, they come from all over Europe. Um, particularly nice in the current political climate in the UK to have everyone congregating in London. The last one was in Iceland, before that Siena, and now Mile End is the home of the Chaucer Congress. Um, so yeah, it's been four days, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and it includes events such as poetry readings and plays, but also mainly in the main format. It's speeches from people talk so we can find out what everyone's doing in the field of Chaucer. Yeah, I mean, the sessions have all been wonderful. I think in terms of my highlights, there was uh, a really great session today on pedagogy. I mean, most academics go to lots of uh, academic conferences and talk about their research. It's wonderful to have a forum to do that, but I think sometimes we forget to talk to each other about good ways of teaching and engaging students. So today there was a panel on bringing the modern into the medieval in the classroom and different ways of trying to get students interested in medieval literature because I think that is always a challenge for medievalists. It's, it's in the past, it's boring, how do we energise students, how do we get people interested? So we, it was kind of a round table, so five people talked about their different practices. So one of my, my colleagues, Sarah Townsend, uh, put on a medieval play with her students, talked to them about different modern interpretations of medieval drama to help them think about medieval issues. And I thought that was a really nice way of getting lots of people in a room talking very openly and candidly about engaging people in medieval studies. So that was one of my highlights, but just meeting so many people as well. I mean, the connections that you make at these kinds of events are really wonderful. I've just finished my PhD and that was on uh, imagery of water in late medieval devotional writings, so a little bit niche, uh, mainly uh, guidebooks for women who live a religious life and I'm interested in how water is used to sort of as an image or to encourage them or to perhaps discourage them, so kind of nature, landscape, gender, these are all the ideas that I'm interested in in my research. Uh, there was a great panel this morning actually on nature and the senses, which was a different genre to me, it was sort of Chaucerian dream poetry, um, but it was kind of helping me to think about the next step, because I suppose I'm in a transitional phase right now, I'm thinking about whether I want to continue with water, or maybe do some other elements, or new genre, how I want to expand my research next. And um, this has been a really good opportunity to hear what other people are doing in the field. Uh, another aspect is history of the emotions. We have a great centre for the history of the emotions at Queen Mary in the history department and lots of people in English collaborating with that. Um, and there's been a few panels on that. And trying to think about where to go next with water has been really fascinating. Finding out more about Chaucer through the Congress I think that the organisers of the Congress, one of whom is our own, Julia Buffy, um, had a really cool idea of beginning the Congress with a plenary panel, so everybody went to it, it's been the People's Palace, um, asking, did Shakespeare live in, did Chaucer live in Shakespeare's London? I apologise, did Chaucer live in Shakespeare's London? So what are the connections between Chaucer and Shakespeare? How can we think about London specifically? How can we think about the interconnections? And I think there's some really good discussion going on at the moment between the boundaries between medieval and early modern and how to sort of engage with those. I think one thing I've learned through this Congress is that lots of people come here not actually to talk about Chaucer. So it's called the Chaucer Congress and that is the key idea. But it's also a home for medievalists that aren't thinking at all about Chaucer but are thinking about his contemporaries or people who are working in a very different tradition. So I think um, what have I learned about Chaucer? I've also learned a lot not about Chaucer actually. Um, but there's also people, Paul Strome is here and he's just written a really amazing book about imagining what Chaucer's life might have been like. So there's a renewed interest in the materiality of Chaucer's life and the historicism but also lots of interesting threads that are completely not about Chaucer which is fun too. So just 
just finished my PhD and in terms of the short term, my next, uh, my next project is spending a year at Queen Mary lecturing, um, engaging with students, uh, doing some Renaissance drama which I'm really excited about as well, alongside medieval stuff. But in terms of personal development, um, I'm excited to start my next project and start applying for some postdoctoral things. So I'm interested in the emotions and the elements. So I'm wondering about how I can marry those together in my research. When water is mentioned in medieval texts, is there particular emotions it evokes? What about earth? How do those interconnect? And there's also a very exciting project going on at Queen Mary here. Julia uh, Boffy is uh, working on a collection of essays about lyrics. So how medieval lyrics can be close read in their historical and um, political context, in their narrative context in the Middle Ages. So doing some work on that with her as well, which is really exciting. So, Trying to figure out what my next steps are, but also enjoying the teaching and um, the community at Queen Mary, hopefully, as well. I think one of the big challenges about being a medievalist is getting students engaged with the literature. You've got Shakespeare, so if you're teaching early modern, Shakespeare's your hook. Students already have done Shakespeare, they know about him, they're excited about him, and I think it's our job as a medievalist to sort of find our own hooks for students. So I think there's kind of two complementary ways of doing that. One is drawing attention to the trends. So we think of the Middle Ages as the Dark Ages and it was so different and everything was, was really scary and bleak. And that's true to an extent, but there's also a lot of parallels in political contexts, think, thinking about things like Brexit in the context of the Middle Ages, thinking about things that are going on right now, but also drawing attention to the really cool and weird things about the Middle Ages, you know, you've got dragons eating people in the stories and a sort of belief in the supernatural, you've got saints' lives where women are kind of fighting devils and things like that. So trying to draw attention to all the really cool weird stuff that might pull people in the kind of Game of Thrones world of the Middle Ages, but also encouraging students to remember that these people might have lived hundreds of years ago, but many of them are having similar feelings to what we're having, dealing with similar problems and having weirdly strange political experiences to what we might even find ourselves experiencing now.